you know, like Led Zeppelin did lock his doll. Richard, Richard Cole, he took this leather strap and he started beating me, and I didn't even know him. They threw Cynthia in the swimming pool and ruined all her velvet clothes. <laughs> Uh-huh. They were really weird. Hostile. Really? Hostile. I know they invited us were to a party. Were they cooking? Led Zeppelin. They invited us to a party really innocently, you know. I'm a fool, Dang, you know. Them. I know. They she likes it. No, no she... they beat her too, and she loved it, though. <gasps> I didn't. I, I went home. <laughs> <laughs> Very quick, before she puts clothes on. You'll never get it again. <laughs> How about I'm going to take a bath. She's going to take a bath. You want to see Jane Mansfield in the bathtub? Who <laughs> <laughs> scratched you all up? Me. Oh, that's me scratching. It's a juicy. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you got to fell out. You got to fell out. They found it, you know, titillating. And it, it amused them that these girls would do anything. So they would, like, push it as far as it, see what these girls would actually do. <laughs> It was a, an extremely volatile, intense uh, traveling rock and roll circus, you know, that, that was the epitome of kind of 70s uh, uh, rock and roll success and glamour and excess, and that's just what Led Zeppelin were. Outrageous stories followed the band like uh, well, a pack of sharks. That dangerous creature appropriately appears in the most notorious groupie story of all, the Led Zeppelin shark incident. That was the wildest thing I've ever been involved in or saw in my life. I don't know what it is. I mean, I don't recall that incident. I don't even know if you can tell all the details. <clears throat> I remember hearing about it from the front time. <laughs> 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 It was 1969 at Seattle's Edgewater Hotel, a favorite stopover for rock bands playing in the area. I found this woman, very eager to do whatever, you know? and um, in this hotel you can go buy fishing poles and you could fish out the window. This is right on the water. Basically what I remember is that Bonzo and I were fishing out the window. The hotel. We heard noise from another room, and of course we didn't want to miss out on anything. And we went over there, and there was some girl lying on the floor. So when they come in, they had this mud shark in their hand. It was either the shark or the snapper. Or the and the chick was like, up for anything, you know? So before we, we knew anything, the chick was sitting on the chair, and they were like, I, I don't know who it was, I can't remember, but they were like hitting her on the back with the mud shark. Hey lady, you got the love on me. This chick had everything done to her with the fish, with ketchup, with, with bottles, with, ke with butter, with everything that I've ever seen done in my life. I mean, it definitely happened. It was a dog and it was a girl. She liked it. I was like, you know, I was just shocked. I, I think I was in shock for the whole thing. The Zeppelin band members always played coy about the incident. You want to know whether I ever did any of these weird and wonderful things? Well, I might have done, but I can't remember it. Whether it was true or not, the shark incident stayed with Led Zeppelin as groupies spread rumors of the band actually feeding a girl to a bunch of sharks. It was a new low in groupie clothing. What everyone does agree on is that Jimmy Page wasn't involved. He had his own way of treating groupies. Part dark prince, part scoundrel. He kept his favorite, Laurie Maddox, under lock and key. I started modeling for a magazine called Star Magazine, which is sort of a cult magazine now, which was a early 70s pre-groupie teen magazine that made 13 year olds look like they were 40 in all Vogue clothes and with musicians and rock stars and um, sort of highlighted these girls as being groupies but they really weren't, they were just models. Lori was a fixture on the Sunset Strip scene. Jimmy first spotted Lori at a poolside party at LA's Hyatt House, otherwise known as the Riot House. He knew then he had to have her. What happened was I was kidnapped, literally, and um, he told me he was going to be with me, and I said, no, he wasn't, and he said, yes, I am, and then we all ended up at the Rainbow, 
and we were at the rainbow, and Richard Cole says to me, get in the bloody car, and if you move, I'll have your head. I'm sure if he said I won her, I'd have gone and asked her to get in the car or whatever and carry her out. I don't think we ever viewed her as 14 years old. I mean, none of those girls were 14. And next thing you know, we're at the hotel. I'm walking down the hall. Next thing you know, I'm pulled into this door, and there I was basically kidnapped and I turn around and look and there's Jimmy sitting in the corner of the room with a hat and a cane saying I told you I'm gonna have you. Jimmy and Lori stayed together for several years in an intensely private relationship. He always left me with the security locked in the room. <laughs> I wasn't really allowed to go very many places with him. Many have wondered what Paige was doing keeping a teenage lover in a Los Angeles hotel room but according to Lori love conquered all. It was worth every minute, <laughs> truly. He was a beautiful person, and he touched my life deeply. I made the same mistake about 50 times, and then one day, uh, some friends of ours from England gave us some blue Osley, and, like, we tripped. And I had on this really low-cut vest, you know, and, and this really risque outfit. And I looked in the mirror, and I just said, Wow, you fucking whore. What are you into? Uh, it, I make, it makes me, in a way, feel, you know, um, superior. I mean, it's ridiculous, but it really does, you know? What did I start with? Oh, fuck. Forget it! The box top! Oh, shit! <laughs> never, never! Oh, that was funny. The box top, back in Atlantic, Georgia. And after the box top, it was a fudge. Now that was big time. And now you get the big guy. You get to fuck the prettiest boys. You get to smoke the best dope. You um, you get to meet all the most frat people. Um, it's just fun. It's just a, it's just really fun. You, you get to like be on top. You just get to ride on the plane they're in. You know, it's just like that. It's just like I don't know. It's magic. It's really magic. They dress the way I want all guys to dress. They have long hair. They talk with a British accent. <laughs> I like English men. I don't know why, I just do. They've got a lot more charm. Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, I, I don't know why I got this way. It's really strange. Well, I got, I got into the rock music um, when the Beatles came out. Well, there's only one way that you can outgroup Linda Eastman at this point, and that is to get Lennon from Yoko, which is going to be at least another two years or Mick from Marianne, which could happen anytime some chick comes along who's just fucking incredible, you know. There's not many of them have that much to offer, really. You know, uh, if they've got something special, it'd be cool, but most of the chicks that are flaunting it around are uh, just, just the normal run-of-the-mill stuff. They get used to it, I guess, you know. It, it must be like eating to them. It just kind of comes really natural. All the, they get used to it. all the girls really falling at their feet, you know, and just... Thank you.